Welcome everyone to the Dying to Know podcast. I'm your host, Diane Dobry, and today's podcast in the spirit of Halloween is on the topic of American ghost stories. And our guest is author, journalist, blogger, and editor, Sherry Cohen, also know as, known as Sherry Clare. Sherry writes fiction and nonfiction books about the South, particular, particularly Louisiana, and about the paranormal with titles that include Haunted Lafayette, Louisiana, and Exploring Cajun Country, a tour of historic Acadiana, the Vi Viola Valentine Paranormal Mystery Series, and the Cajun Embassy Series of Contemporary Romances, and the Cajun Series of Historical Romances. Her blog about the South is called Weird, Wacky, and Wild South, covering her travels in the American South. And, other, and another blog is Haunted Deep South, focusing on stories about spirits lingering in America's Deep South. She writes for publications that include AAA Southern Travels, New Orleans Magazine, or I should say Nolens <laughs> Magazine, Travel Age, West Magazine, and DeSoto Magazine, where she's assistant editor and just wrote about Mississippi's most haunted place, the McRaven House. Another story this month in AAA Magazine covers the best frightfully fun spots for Halloween. Welcome, Sherry, um, to the first episode of the Dying to Know podcast on the HungarianAquarian.com uh, website. Um, so we met on a media travel tour in St. Augustine, Florida, um, which is another city known to be haunted. And in fact, it was featured on Ghost Hunters for the lighthouse haunting. And um, we stayed in the oldest hotel in the city, St. Francis Inn, which has a ghost story. And you wrote about that on your blog or used a, a story from our fellow travel writer, Kathleen Walls um, from Hosts with Ghosts. But you stayed on the third floor where the hauntings are reported to take place. Do you wanna talk about that story and uh, whether or not you experienced anything that week? Sure, um, I didn't actually stay in the haunted quote, haunted room, um, a friend of mine did. So I was constantly asking her about, you know, her night and she's like, oh yeah, no big deal. So um, I didn't experience anything on the third floor, unfortunately, because I'm always, every time I stay someplace, people, people get freaky about these things, but I actually really like it. Um, mm -hmm. But the story goes, there was a woman who was a uh, servant at this house and she fell in love with the proprietor's son, which, you know, is a, a no-no back in those days because yeah. they were from different classes. I think they might've been from different races if I remember, but uh, it was a big deal. And so I think um, her death was, I'm trying to pull it out of my memory, was um, suspicious and she apparently haunts the third floor. Mm -hmm. So did the person who was staying in the room experience anything? Did Do you know? No. <laughs> she didn't. No. We did go to the lighthouse though. The lighthouse is fabulous. I yeah. Know. Yeah, lighthouse. I, that was a that was a high spot on that trip as well. I didn't go up, but I I did see the ghost hunters uh, show about that, and they said that they had experienced something. But um, so, how did you become interested in in doing these kinds of stories, especially the haunted locations in the South? And you know, were you ever involved in paranormal investigations, or are you a medium or something? No, I'm just from New Orleans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is probably pretty haunted itself and voodoo and all that. Yeah, there's a lot in New Orleans um, and it's a very old city. So, you know, a lot of people say, think it's probably because of voodoo and stuff, but I think it's just because it's, you know, it's over 300 years old. So it's got a lot of history, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know. I, I started, I'm a journalist and I write features. So every time I was at a newspaper that say do a ghost story for October and so I just became one of the ghost writer. <laughs> Technically <laughs> ghost writer for and October is the big time for yeah, yeah. when people want to hear these things. So um, I mean what what kinds of stories in um, in, in New Orleans can you oh my goodness did you find very interesting? There's so many. Uh, my favorite are the hotels because uh, the Montleon Hotel, I mean, I've stayed in a bunch of them too, because I used to review, well, I still do, rev uh, review hotels for a magazine 
for travel agents. And um, I've stayed at the Montleon and the Bourbon Orleans have stayed in their haunted room. And again, nothing happened, but the, my friend down the hall had weird things happen to her all night. I was like, why are the ghosts going somewhere else? This is the <laughs> <laughs> what kind of weird things did she experience? Do you remember? Well, the Bourbon Orleans used to be, um, there, there was many things, one of which was a, a, a convent. And so the story goes that a nun haunts this room on the third floor. Again, the third floor. Yeah. Um, so I stayed in that room and nothing happened to me, but she was about two doors down and her television just kept coming on and off all night long. Wow. But the um, Bourbon Orleans actually has kids that are supposedly haunted there. So that could have been them. Who knows? Mm -hmm. but, okay. Um, interesting. <laughs> yeah, and um, your your book about haunted Lafayette, Louisiana, um, talks about different houses and restaurants and plantations, and even the swamps and the bayous. Mm -hmm. So, what is your favorite story or stories from from, from that book? Uh, I I like the uh, it's Cajun country. Lafayette is like the heart of Cajun country, and so there's a lot of mm -hmm. unusual myths surrounding Cajun culture. And so there's a whole chapter in there about the different myths. The most famous one is the Lou Garou, which is a French werewolf. I mean, it comes from France. It's not a typically Cajun story, but I mean, it's a French story. So it comes from the motherland. But, um, you know, they, it's something I think you tell kids to behave. You know, don't, if you don't behave, the Lou Garou is going to come get you. <laughs> <laughs> there was a movie like that. I think it was called The Village or something where they, they told oh, the yeah. kids that the scary monster would come. Exactly. And, uh, but there's a bunch of others. Uh, there's Madame Gross. Uh, you know, I'm getting it mixed up. Madame Grand. Um, oh, I can't think of the word now. It's all French. It's yeah. uh, a woman with long fingernails. And she can, if you lock your door as a child, she can stick her fingernail into the lock and open it and come get you at night. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's all about scaring the kids then. <laughs> yeah, it is. And then there's the, the other one was uh, Gross Bataille, which is, um, uh, it's just a big, ugly something. And it's funny because you know you could use it for a lot of things. It could be a, a weird animal or it could be a bug. And so in Louisiana, because it's so swampy, we have these awful roaches that grow in the trees that are big and they fly. So to me, that's what that is. <laughs> oh my God. Anybody, and it's not even a ghost. It's kind of like the um, New Jersey um, moth man or whatever it is, the, oh, the yeah. moth creature. Um, so you, you did a story for AAA this, uh, which is on the um, front um, thing that I created the the visual and it's the best frightfully fun spots for Halloween mm -hmm. and I took a look at that and it was places around the country have you been to all those places or some of them I have well one of them is the Montley on Hotel in New Orleans mm -hmm. which has several ghosts um, my favorite well actually the other two that I have in that article are the McRaven house in Vicksburg Mississippi Mm -hmm. which is extremely interesting if you love ghost stories and you're not frightened by them <laughs> go visit that one because it's it's labeled the most haunted house in mississippi wow and it is very strange it's built in three sections so it's also like a time capsule because the the back part was built way back when and it's very rustic and then you've got a middle section that predates the civil war and then the front part, I think, came with the Victorian era. Uh, maybe it was after this, before the Civil War, too. But there are different time periods. And um, there were different people living there. And so different pe those different people are haunting the place. So the one time, um, the, the busiest part of the house, from what I understand, is in the middle, where a woman um, gave birth to a child. And the child died, and then she died. Or no. Um, Maybe I'm getting it wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, it's so funny because I see so many of these, I get them mixed up. But yeah, while, I guess so. <laughs> while I was in the room getting this tour, the ormoir doors just opened and closed. 
Oh and my I gosh. Thought, and we all kind of looked at it. <laughs> we were like, okay. And then I thought, well, maybe we moved on. The, no one moved, but we, I thought maybe something, something, you know, some vibration did it. Mm -hmm. And we started talking about this woman again and the door opened and closed. It was very strange. <sighs> wow. But, that was also in DeSoto like, magazine, right? That story. Yes, I did a big piece on that in DeSoto. But the other one too is the Eureka Springs is another haunted town. It seems like they, there are certain towns in America that just have a bunch of stories and New Orleans is one, uh, Vicksburg's another, and Eureka Springs is one and it has, again, another hotel. It's called the Crescent Hotel and it's, that's got a really weird story to it too lots of hauntings and the ghost hunters have been there too and that's the only place they got a full body apparition on camera wow so i wow. Would definitely recommend that one too <laughs> where is that that's eureka what what state is that oh, i'm sorry eureka springs arkansas it's almost to the um missouri border mm -hmm. really great city too it's a fun place to visit oh well that's good to know two two things in uh in one hauntings and uh tourism <laughs> yeah. um have you ever lived in a haunted house yourself i um when i lived in baton rouge i used to work for the advocate newspaper and uh we moved into a house that had been flipped so this nice couple came in and bought the house and renovated it and then we bought it mm -hmm. so um out of the corner of our eyes, my husband and I kept seeing things, but we never said anything to each other because we thought it was our imagination. So, you know, just, I thought, oh, it's a shadow or it's something, you know? Um, and he actually thought he saw his mother in the kitchen one day. And this is right oh. after he had passed or, or a woman like his mother. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but again, you know, we thought it's our imagination. And then I had a, a friend who's a medium come and stay with us. And she spent the night in a in our guest bedroom and she came out the next morning and she said no you, you got a, a little old lady who lives here and she described this woman who was about the size of my husband's mother and hmm. he thinks it was his mother um my neighbor told me that the previous owner had died in the house she was an elderly lady very petite same you know so they both match what my friend had seen in the night but, um, and this little lady told her that she was protecting our kids and she was there to help. So it was all very nice. Oh, but, that's you know, sweet. <laughs> that was the first time my husband and I ever talked about it because we both at the same time went, oh, I've been seeing things, you know? So, <laughs> it was cool. weird, but yeah, but very nice. Yeah, I never felt, and I never really saw much after that, but um, you know, who knows? Could have been. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you also do a, a blog about the haunted deep south um too. In so fact, well, I put that I actually started um I was writing about ghost stories and about weird southern things because I I think the south is full of weird southern things but it's all now in one website called weirdsouth.com and there's a haunted section there so if you want to see okay. some stories that's where they are but yeah the blog is fun because um I'm a travel writer by day that's my day job and so when I go to places that are, that have ghost stories, um, you know, I always like to write about them. And usually the print publications, unless it's October, right. don't have a ghost story. So I'll put it on the blog. Um, yeah. That's what the blog's for. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm trying to do with my website as well as, you know, the stories that people are like, you know, they wait until Halloween to uh, when right. it's safe to talk about. Okay. <laughs> and um, I, I also saw that um, you had written a story about um, spellbinding Gree Gree and sachets is that how i pronounce it gree gree yes and and what is gree gree and do you carry these with you for when you're in these haunted places hmm. i never thought about that um yes yeah, so well again i'm from new orleans and gree gree is a uh it's actually a voodoo word mm -hmm. um and so whenever i talked about these they're, they're kind of like prayer in a bag. You know, you put herbs and things inside a bag and you carry it with you for, uh, and you have an intention. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want something for luck, you might put some lucky herbs in a bag, maybe 
uh, coins, anything that if you're looking for money, um, things that represent what you're trying to pull into your life. So you carry it with you and it's just, it smells good. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it you, you reminds you, hey, yes, good things are coming. You know, it's kind of new agey in a sense, but it's based on, Grigri's based on voodoo. Mm-hmm. But um, when I decided to do a book about it, I had my co-author, Jude Bradley, is from Massachusetts, and she had similar experiences there. So we realized that the whole idea of putting things in a bag to carry with you for luck was kind of a universal thing. And so we decided to research it. And um, so we, it, it deals with all kinds of lucky bags. But yes, I bring, I carry a bags around with me I haven't done it in a ghost I never thought about bringing it to a ghost house I usually do it for things like prosperity and protection yeah because I when I was looking it up I was like I've never heard of Grigri and I looked it up and it said you know am, an amulet or something to ward off evil spirits and um yeah. I like I have a bag of um crystals and stones that I've no? gotten yeah. in Florida at a karma cottage and a uh, in Crystal River, Florida, and they, um, I, I, you know, they have this whole setup of, you know, picking out whichever, I mean, stones like crazy with little, little pieces of paper that say, this is for this, and this is for this, yeah. so uh, right. they, even, they even have one for writers, so I, I bought a little piece for that. Um, <laughs> so now that's a book then, Magic's in the Bag. I, I wrote it down and I didn't remember if it was a, an article or a book. So It's a I, book. It was published by Llewellyn, which publishes a lot of New Age titles. Um, okay. Once it sold out, they didn't reprint it. So uh, Jude and I uh, updated it and made it a little bit more friendly for digital. And so it's now an ebook that you can download. Oh, great. Is that available on your website or on Amazon or available at all online bookstores <laughs> great yeah great that's great to know so um let's see um hmm is there anything that um that you've experienced that you were surprised that you ha- that happened to you that uh shocked you <laughs> oh, you seem to be pretty like easygoing and like, oh yeah, this was haunted, that was haunted, I'm looking for it, but <laughs> did anything ever shock you or scare you? Uh, yes, um, and it's funny because, you know, I've never seen anything. I've had weird things happen to me, but um, besides the shadows in the corner of my eye, I've never seen like a person walk through my house, and so I think that would scare, you know, <laughs> you know what out of me. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that being said, um I haven't really there's, there was one time I went I, I, there's a friend of mine who lives in New Orleans who d- has a paranormal society and he wrote a book and I, I reviewed it for a book column I used to have and he claimed that there's this uh, cemetery outside of Marksville Louisiana that just freaked him out that was the only thing that ever freaked him out so of course I had to go you know <laughs> <laughs> You go in when everyone else is running the other way, right? Right. And it's funny because I was there on a press trip like you and I were in St. Augustine and I was with some other people and I was telling them about it. And the tourism guy goes, oh, that's the witch cemetery because there's a silly little tale about the cemetery. He goes, I'll take you out there. And I was like, and it was about 830 at night. And I'm like, I don't know. Should we go at night? You know, when, <laughs> it's yeah. like those movies. Don't go in there at night. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so me and this other journalist and the tourism guy, we drove out there and we, we and you go down this long road that's extremely spooky looking. It's very dark. And so we pull up to the cemetery and he's, and it's an old Civil War cemetery well, the Civil War guys are buried in the back, like in a, a group uh, grave, which is freaky enough. And then there's some stones in the front from residents. The lights of the truck were shining on all of these tombstones. And he turns off the engine and um, it's this big noise happened. It sounded like someone was, um, you know how when you turn the key of an engine that's already on, it makes this room? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, that's what we heard. And we turned to our, the tourism guy and said, what, you know, what are you doing? He goes, and he puts his hand up in the air. He says, engine's off. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know what that was, but it was freaky. And then, uh, 
So we kind of looked through the windshield and we were like, let's get out of here. <laughs> but I came back the next day during the day, which I highly recommend. And uh, it wasn't scary during the day, but there's some weird things in that cemetery. Um, can't explain it. But like I said, my friend in New Orleans, who, who's a ghost hunter, he, he's gone in there to tape and to do, um, do some paranormal investigating. And his, his machinery is always stopping the battery drains you know all kinds of stuff so yeah something happening in there i don't know what it is but i don't want to go back <laughs> <That was> yeah <laughs> so now you're moving to georgia which has a lot of hauntings as well it and... does i know i'm hoping to move to marietta that's what we're looking at uh -huh. they have a ghost tour and the neighboring town is roswell and they have a ghost tour so I'm kind of excited. Yeah, I've heard a lot about Savannah as well. So yeah, right. I know so, I haven't done that one either. I like to I hope to do that. Yeah, you're going to be, you know, keeping busy there. I think, I think so. <laughs> keeping up with the ghost. Maybe I should join you. We could do some ghost ghost writing together, and uh, I can fill up this uh, website with some blog posts. But um, no, that sounds, it sounds like you have a really interesting, well, what else do you write about besides ghosts? I mean, obviously travel and Cajun country and stuff. Is there any, anything else coming up? Any other books? Well, I actually have a, um, I, I have a mystery series called the Viola Valentine Mystery, Paranormal Mystery Series. And it's basically about a woman who goes through a hurricane and comes out seeing ghosts that have died by water. And it's all the idea that, a trauma can open door, a psychic door. So she's a travel writer like me and everywhere she goes, it's kind of like murder she wrote. She has a, a murder to solve featuring ghost. So, oh, okay. That's so interesting. Fun. Yeah. Well, and is that um, for, is that um, young adult or is that uh, adult um, mystery books? It's adult. It's, uh, it has a little girl on the cover because, um, my character uh, loses a child. The one woman, the uh, one person she really wants to connect with is her daughter who passed away, but uh, she can't because she didn't die by water. So that's kind of the, uh, I call it the, the Muldor <laughs> thing. I don't know if you remember um, Fox Muldor and uh, the X-Files. He kept trying to get a sister and he never could connect with her. That always seems to be the case when I was looking at, um, you know, the, the people in the, um, the researchers and like uh, William James and um, all the um, ghost hunters and spiritualist uh, researchers from the 1800s, they all seemed to get into this research because they lost a brother, they lost a child, and mm -hmm. it was always someone that they was really close and near and dear to them that they just couldn't connect with. And they were just so curious about it. And actually, that's what led me to my dissertation studies was you know how people turn to popular culture to uh understand or to come to some kind of idea of what the afterlife means you know oh, cool. they have a, a need to know so that's that's kind of the thing there's always like something like i need to know what happened to my personal um loss the person in my life that i lost yeah. so well, I've heard that a lot. I've heard a lot of people say, you know, I don't believe, because I interview a lot of people who have haunted houses naturally. Yeah. And, um, a lot of them too will fight it and say, I, I, I don't believe in it, but this happened. And then they might say something like, what, when my grandmother passed away, I saw her at the edge of my bed one night. And um, so that seems to be kind of a common thread I keep finding is that when loved ones pass away, people either dream about them heavily or they see them right afterwards um kind of fades with time but and i can yeah. imagine it. i mean i have no answers i don't know what ghosts are you know what the deal is but it's um for me it's fascinating and i i want to know more <laughs> yeah <laughs> well the crisis apparitions they said uh, during world war one um a lot of people had that happen where the the soldiers mm -hmm would appear to their family and they they speculated that it was be, because it happened a lot then because there was no you know quick way to let the family know so the the spirits were were coming to let their family know and then two weeks later or a month later they'd get a letter saying 
you know, your family mm -hmm. member passed. And so I, I know that um, the Rhine Research Center collected a lot of those kinds of stories. And even these researchers from the 1800s had, had lots of those um, spontaneous crisis apparition stories. Oh, so fascinating. Well, I really appreciate your time um, coming and just chatting with us about your your writing and your your books and um, well, thank you. And uh, it's always interesting to hear a ghost story, a good ghost story. So um, I appreciate your your interest in that, and uh, I hope to get to work with you on that sometime. Sure, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, well. Good luck to you and uh, hope to read some stuff from your Georgia experiences. <laughs> okay, I'll let you know. All right, take care. You too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.